guys, it's Ginger. I'm here today with another music review. Um, my plan was to do it last week, but I was worn slap out. This week is David Bowie's Black Star. Um, I contemplated on whether or not to do a review on this. And because I don't have that much experience with Bowie, I was never that into Bowie. Um, but I decided since this was his final album, I would give it a listen because I've never really listened to an entire album of his. Um, I liked this. It's not an easy listen. It's not an easy listen. When I mean not an easy listen, I don't mean easy listening music. You know, like the genre easy, easy listening. I mean this, it's complicated. His music is complicated. It's layered. I was talking to my dad about it the other day. Well, I'm recording this on Saturday. I talked to him about it last night, Friday night, when we were having dinner. And he owns a Bowie album. I think it was the first album. And he said he bought it and he listened to it a lot. But And I thought it was odd that he had that in his collection because all of his other stuff is pretty heavy. You know, um... Black Sabbath, um, and then he has like Eagles and, you know, he has uh, several albums from Blood Rock and things like that. His taste was always a little more heavier, not so experimental, and that's what we were talking about. I kind of consider Bowie experimental, and I also can, I personally consider him to be more of a performance artist because of the experimental, uh, experimentalness, it's not a word, of his music and uh, the different personas that he's taken on through the years and the way that he always morphed the way he looked and things like that. But I gave this a listen. There were several songs on here that I liked a lot. There was nothing on here that I didn't like, let me tell you that. Um, it's just not the type of music I was ever really into, but I will say that it it's hard to say if the sadness that I equate with the sound of this music is because it was meant to be sad or if it was or if it's because I I listened to it after he died which this came out the day he died, so everybody's listened to it after he died. Um, so it's hard to say. Is it sad to me because the music is sad or because the man just passed away? It's hard to say. But there was some sadness uh, in here that I felt. You know? I, I It's hard to say why. Now, um, I really liked the first cut, Black Star. Um, I really liked Lazarus a lot, a lot. Um, and Everything Away, which was the last cut. Everything on here was really good, but like I said, it has an experimental feel. Lots of, um, you know, rhythm changes and it would sometimes sound rock and then it would sometimes sound jazzy and you could definitely hear a jazz influence in it. Um, you know, it's David, I don't think you can put David Bowie into a genre. He was a genre all his own, you know, the Bowie genre, I guess. But um, I definitely think it's worth picking up. Um, if for nothing else, then it was his last album. It's his um, swan song, I guess. And um, it was it was really good. But it may not be for everybody, you know, because of the fact that his music seems to me kind of experimental. So, that is everything for the Bowie Review. Now, I also am going to show you... This is Saturday. I just got home from... Um, Doing a little crate digging with my friend. We went to a Dead Wax collector's sh vinyl show or whatever they want to call it um, over in Houston. 
bunch of vendors got together in this uh, hotel ballroom meeting room type of thing so you could go through the records of all these different uh, store owners so I got some pretty good stuff uh, for some reason a lot of what I picked um, kind of leaned uh, country for some reason who knows you know you see one thing and then it becomes a theme you know sometimes I'll pick things and it's lots of rock heavy or or like this time it's lots of country stuff so the very first thing I saw in the very first bin that um, we went through was um, this 1982 Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson Poncho and Lefty you know classic Waylon and Merle record. Um, also, if you have not checked out their latest album together, which is called Django and Jimmy, it's really good. Um, if you would like to like me to do a review on it, I can. Um, it came back. It came out a while back. But um, my next album that I got was Hank Williams Jr. Whiskey Bent and Hellbound. There it is right there. This is from 1979. And this has uh, Whiskey Benton Hellbound and The Conversation with Waylon Jennings, which I love that song. Uh, the next one I got is the Waylon Jennings, a Waylon Jennings album called Dreaming My Dreams. Here it is right there. Um, this has Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way? Uh, it's been a long time leaving, but I'll be a long time gone. Bob Wills is Still the King, which I love that song. And um, this is from 1975. And it says back on the back of here, um, recorded live in Austin, Texas, September 27th, 1974. So I wasn't even a, a year old when this was recorded live. Because <laughs> I was born in October of 73. All right, the next one is another Hank Jr. See, you see the theme here? <laughs> um, and I'm going to be going to see Hank Jr. this um, August. Uh, and uh, Chris Stapleton will be opening up for him. Uh, this is Hank Jr. Family Tradition. And, of course, this has Family Tradition. Only Daddy That'll Walk the Line. All that kind of fun stuff. I love these pictures. Look at the back of this. He's all zonked out, shirtless in a chair. His room's all trashed. Ah, the good old days. This is from uh, 1979. Uh, the next one here, I actually got a couple of soundtracks. I'm usually not big into soundtracks, but hey, some movies have really good soundtracks. And Coal Miner's Daughter was one of the movies that had a really great soundtrack. And this one was actually a promotional copy because it's got the little notch right there. I'll cover up the, the little green tag, but it's got a little notch right there, which back then indicated uh, that, usually indicated that it was a promotional album. Um, so that's what it looks like, Coal Miner's Daughter. There's Sissy Spacek playing Loretta Lynn. And then there's... Uh, Sissy Spacek and Tommy Lee Jones as Loretta Lynn and Doolittle Lynn. Do, do. If you've seen the movie, you'll understand that. Do. Um, let's see. It has uh, Sissy Spacek sang uh, all of the uh, Loretta Lynn songs. That's what's so great about that movie is that Sissy Spacek actually sang the songs. And uh, Beverly D'Angelo actually sang the Patsy Cline songs because she played Patsy Cline in the movie. So Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline were best friends. So um, we've got Blue Moon of Kentucky, which was uh, sung by Patsy Cline in the movie or sung by Beverly D'Angelo in the movie. But here, Levon Helm is singing it. But then we have Honky Tonk Girl, Sissy Spacek, um, Walking After Midnight, Beverly D'Angelo, Crazy, Beverly D'Angelo, I Fall to Pieces, Sissy Spacek, 
Sweet Dreams Beverly D'Angelo, Back in Baby's Arms Sissy Spacek and Beverly D'Angelo. Um, one's on the way, Sissy Spacek, You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man, You're Looking at Country, Coal Miner's Daughter, all those performed by Sissy Spacek. So, but that's what I love about the movie. Sissy Spacek did a spot on job of singing like Loretta Lynn. So, I already love the album. So, and I never, I've never owned it. So, that's pretty cool. And then here's another one that I got. Um, not necessarily, I mean, this, the, the, oh, wait. This, do, 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 do. Coal Miner's Daughter was from 19... Coal Miner's Daughter was from 1980. Okay, this next one is from... What year are you? What? 79. 1979. You see, I like... 70s and 80s time stuff. <laughs> so that's when I was a little kid. I was a little kid in the, the late 70s and early 80s. So, anyway... Um, showing my age, but, um, this is the original soundtrack to Every Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood and the Dega Monkey, or the Orangutan, pardon moi, the Orangutan. And this is a promotional one because it has a big sticker on here that says, not for sale, promotional copy. Uh, like I said, it was from 1978, and this has... Um, Eddie Rabbit, who sang the theme song, Every Which Way But Loose. It's got Mel Tillis, Sandra Locke, who was in the movie and was like Clint Eastwood's real-life love person back in the 70s. So she's in a lot of his movies. Anyway, uh, Mel Tillis, uh, Charlie Rich, uh, um, Carol Chase, Phil Everly's on it, Hank Thompson, and then there's some instrumentals on here too. Um, but I like a lot of the songs that were from this movie, so that's why I picked that up. Uh, this next one, uh, oh, such great reminders when I was a child. Let's see. Do you get the theme here too? A lot of my musical preferences have to do with childhood memories. This is from 1982. Ricky Skaggs, Highways and Heartaches. Uh, this has Heartbroken, which is one of my favorite songs by him. Um, it also has Highway 40 Blues, Honey Child. Highway 40 Blues, I remember. Uh, I think it was, it was the, the summer that my great-grandfather came down to... Well, it was the first time I met him. My great-grandfather came down from Michigan. And I remember that he would take us to the kettle for breakfast. I'm pretty sure. I remember being in the kettle for breakfast. I think it was when he came down. And they had Highway 40 Blues on the jukebox. And I played it every time we were there. I love that song. Love it. Ah, and also, I wouldn't change you if I could. That's a good song, too. All right, the next one, unless you're from Texas, specifically Houston, you're not going to have an appreciation for this, but who remembers when Houston had the Houston Oilers? This was before Texans, this was before the Texans, but it was the Houston Oilers, okay? And you, listen, you think that Houston's love for the Texans is major honey, their love for the Oilers at one point, the Houston Oilers, which actually were traded to Tennessee, and I think they're the Tennessee Titans now. But when they were in Houston, the Houston Oilers in the 70s and the early 80s, oh my God. Everywhere, you would not believe it. They had a theme song. All kinds of, it was the, the whole thing, um, the big slogan for it was love you blue because their uniforms were powder blue and had the powder blue oil derrick on it on the helmet and i remember you would go to which they still do it now but 
back then you didn't see regular things in places like Foley's, which is now Macy's. But Foley's, you'd go into Foley's and they would have love you blue stuff. That was like a big deal. This is when I was a little kid. Um, and you'd turn on the radio and they would play the Oilers theme song. Houston Oilers number one. They'd play the theme song. And it was just... You know, and I was never into football, but that was like a big deal. I remember going to Dairy Queen, and you could get a Derek Dolls doll at Dairy Queen, and I had one. And all it was was a cloth, a cloth thing that was sh doll shaped, and it had a uh, a print on it, a screen print of what was supposed to look like a Derek Dolls cheerleader, and then they just stuffed it with stuffing. It wasn't like a actual doll. It was just like a rag doll type of thing. But I had that. And here it is right here. The Mac Hayes Euler Hits album 1980 through 81 featuring his hit single Love You Blue Kick It In plus the 12 days of an Euler Christmas. And it also has Houston Oilers number one theme song on it. Look at that. Look at that. They had some other things that had to do with the Houston Oilers theme song, but this, I wanted the whole album. Oh my goodness, y'all. I, I remember them playing Houston Oilers number one on the radio like it was yesterday. And if you look at this band, the background, that's the Houston Astrodome where the Oilers played. Because the Astrodome opened in like the early 60s. So all the major sporting events were in the Astrodome. So um, now they're at NRG, which is a different stadium, and the Astrodome is still being debated on what to do with it. Um, anyway, so it says, this has been an exciting year for me and all the guys in the Love You Blue Band to be performing at all of the Oilers' home games and sharing in this unprecedented Love You Blue drive for the Super Bowl. I want to thank all of the great bunch at the Oiler office who have been so kind to me, especially Mr. Bud Adams and Mr. Mike McClure. This album is dedicated to the greatest coaching staff and team in pro football today. The Houston Oilers and all of the terrific Love You Blue fans who love, whose love and enthusiasm make it all worthwhile. Look at that. I love it. I love it. Let me see. Where's my phone? I want to see if I can find that thing online. Here it is. The Houston Oilers fight song. Houston Oilers number one. Let me play it. Eighty-two. So, you know, 
he just died. So that kind of stuff's flying off the shelves, honey. All right. Next is a Hotel California, the Eagles. So, you know, stuff like this, pretty hot property. And my last album, thanks to my friend Christy, who found it and was like, here you go. I bought the one that we found before, so here's the one that you can buy, and it's in good condition. Motley Crue, Theater of Pain, from 1985, has... Oh, it was part of my records. Uh, home Sweet Home. Uh, smoking in the boys' room. So, yay! So that is everything for the haul. It's everything for the haul portion of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Um, check out that David Bowie album if you so choose. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you... If you blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to subscribe if you are, if you, oh my god, oh my god, it's time for a nap. <sighs> Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can come back and sit for a spell. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.